Hello and welcome. I send you my very best greetings. Consider this. It takes a village to raise a child, right? How about this grim context? School violence, mass shootings, missing children, underage drinking, Tevin deaths. When does the village get it so wrong? And who specifically is to be blamed? I present this short story. There was an important job to be done and everybody was sure somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Now somebody got very angry about that because it was everybody's job. It ended up being that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. The above story calls into question the accountability deficit that may emerge in our village model of child rearing. Let me take you through my village. I would like to list 13 members of the village to be persons of interest who may be, can be, and should be held accountable. They all start with the letter P. Number one, person. Every person from age 2 to 102 is responsible for age-appropriate self-discipline. From potty training to partying to a professional life, we generally all know what the right thing to do is at a particular age. Number two, parent and parent figures bear the primary and legal responsibility for positive child-rearing practices and for fostering the important rules and values of our human society. Number three, pastors, pundits, molanas, and all religious influences instill and extend the religious and moral code of our parents. Number four, pedagogues. Our professional teachers build on, consolidate, and refine the compliance of rules and regulations. They reinforce the values needed for a disciplined, orderly, safe, and productive society. Number five, peer groups are powerfully influential at any age and could be wonderfully positive and life-enhancing. If our children have socials at church, go to mosque together, have study groups, meet at each other's homes with parent consent, sent for parties. These become the days of their lives that they will remember forever. How does it all go wrong? Poor parenting practices, unprofessional teachers, destructive peer groups, or just a very undisciplined person who cannot and will not comply to the rules of society. Regardless, these are the P's they, and in particular you as parent, will have to deal with. Number six, the parent disciplined panel of the school board, where allegations of serious misconduct are heard in a democratic way. The result of this could be demerits, detention, suspension, and even a recommendation for expulsion. Number seven, psychosocial services. These will be called in through various stages of their lives to try and identify and heal the underlying reasons for continued deviant behavior. Now, as it turns out, when unchecked and corrected, if the above are all unsuccessful, poor behavior escalates. And number eight, the police is called in for violent and criminal behavior, in which case number nine, the prosecutor of the court is likely to recommend the rehabilitation of the minor in a specialized juvenile facility. If all these processes up until this point are still unsuccessful, upon release, further crime and violence may continue and may lead to imprisonment where their lives may be governed by number 10, a prison warden who seeks to instill discipline in his inmates. Now it's possible self-discipline could be learned now and could be well demonstrated and the person may be pardoned, in which case number 11, a parole officer will be tasked to check on compliance for a while. Still. Now, unfortunately, it may be that even up until this stage, all else fails and the person's behavior results in his or another person's death, where sadly a bereaved parent or number 12, a poor bearer, has to carry them to their grave. Now, what about number 13? Number 13 is Parliament, which carries the legislative function of our government. There are legal frameworks that are informative in terms of how we raise our children, how we discipline them, and how, through people, institutions, and processes, by restorative practices, we rehabilitate them. And I've been in a school long enough to say, these can and do work. And when we get it right, it is a matter for all of us to celebrate. But when we get it wrong, it calls for self-reflection and a high level of accountability of all persons, parents, peer groups, pastors, pedagogues. We should get it right in the first place.